Coffee Break Swedish, Season 1, Episode 10. Hej allihopa och välkomna till Coffee Break Swedish. Jag heter Mark. Och jag heter Hanna. Hur mår du Hanna? Jag mår jättebra Mark. Hur mår du? Jag mår också jättebra. We are at lesson 10 of our course, which means that we've reached the first quarter, the end of the first quarter of the course. There are 40 lessons in season one and I am quite excited because I am beginning to feel a little more confident with my Swedish. I think we learned a lot in, in the 10 lessons and I know what you mean. In the beginning you go... I can't do this yep. and I can't put a, a, a sentence together. But as as time goes on, we've certainly picked up the... the I think we've, we've increased the number of, of words in our average sentence as well. And, and, and it's, it's good to be able to develop that language. And we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about that in this episode. But the main thing about this episode, it's a little bit of a review of what we've learned so far. So, ska vi börja? Ja, det gör vi. Okay, let's get to it. So what have you found easy about Swedish? And I guess also, what what have you found difficult? I think the first thing I found that has been a little easier than I expected with Swedish is the whole idea of verbs Mm. and the fact that we don't need to think about conjugations and, and different persons and so on as we do in other languages, which has been great news. Um, I think generally I've been a little bit surprised that quite often it's a case of almost literally translating something. There's a word for each word in a sentence. So going between English and Swedish. um, In terms of difficulty, I would say probably pronunciation wise and my vowels in particular. (laughs) I think it's 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 difficult. Is that thing about we are not um, we don't hear Swedish that often. If we um, learn French or Spanish, you have an idea in your head exactly. how that sounds like. Yep. And people start from the real beginning here when it comes to pronunciation. But I think you're doing really well. And I'm Thank sure you. the listeners are doing really well as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So let us know what you are finding easy and what you're finding difficult. We do have uh, quite an active Facebook page. Um, so at the moment, while we're publishing this in, in 2020, we have an active Facebook page and people are, are sharing their thoughts about learning Swedish. So we'll post on there and that you can perhaps give us your feedback. What do you find difficult? What do you find easy? Um, we know the word for difficult. It's svårt. Ja, bra, svårt. What's easy in Swedish? Lätt. Ah, so um, you, I think you've said in the past, uh, det är inte så svårt. Is that mm-hmm. right? It's not so difficult. Um, so... Would they are let be it's easy? Precis. So they are let. Uh, let me see if I can do this. They are let at, how do you say to learn? At lära sig. At lära sig? Yes, so that is maybe something we should add because we haven't learned this phrase. Okay, well, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah. They are let at lära sig svenska. Perfect. Bra. It's easy to learn Swedish. So there is a, a phrase that we've reached at episode 10 and we can say der lätt at lära sig svenska. Yeah. Okay, so let's think a little bit more about learning. Uh, last time we were looking at language phrases and saying ja förstår inte and kan du upprepa? Yeah. Ja. Upprepa. No um, so um, how do you say I'm learning Swedish? Jag lär mig svenska. I thought you said to learn was at lära sig. Yes. Okay. This is, I'm I'm telling you, oh, it's so easy with Swedish. <laughs> and it is when it comes to the verbs. Mm-hmm. But, um, so, at lära sig is reflexive. Oh, or is it like to learn yourself? Yes. Right. Okay. So, jag lär mig svenska. Yeah. Du lär dig svenska. Right, so the lär stays the same, but here we're using, I'm guessing these are reflexive pronouns. Yes. So, jag lär mig, mm-hmm. du lär dig. How would we say he is learning Swedish? Han lär sig. Sig, okay. So, han lär sig. Is it the same for she? Yes, third person always stays the same. So, hon lär sig. Hon lär sig. Hen lär sig. Hen lär sig. Oh, now... No, you said you said they're lär and say together. You said lär sig. 
Yes, because I speak Swedish quicker than you, Mark. <laughs> okay, so the idea of speaking quickly and then things happen with with R's and S's together. Yes, lache. Yeah. But is it lär say? Lär say. Okay, I'm just picking up in these things because I know that our listeners will think, "Oh, that was different." Um, so, ja lär mig, du lär dig, uh, han lär say or lär say, um, hon lär say, um, and then what about we? Vi lär oss. Oh, all right. This is different. Vi lär oss. Um, we've learned oss before. I think when we were talking about, we are glad that you are here with us. Exactly. Vi är glada att ni är här med oss. Yes. Right. So oss, we learn us. Yes. <laughs> Vi lär oss. What about ni? Ni lär er. And again, we've learned that er when we are glad to be here with you. Exactly. Att vara här med er. So uh, vi lär oss, ni lär er. Ja. And then dom? Dom lär sig. Oh, so we go back to the, the say there. Yeah. Dom lär sig. Okay, right. And of course you can be learning Swedish. So that, that's a little more complicated than the, the normal verbs that we've been looking at because yeah. we've got these reflexive pronouns. So that, that's good. Um, okay, what about, uh, what if we practice everything that we've covered so far? Yes, yeah, should we do that? I thought we could have a, a, a dialogue. A dialogue, yeah. yeah. And I know that you've prepared a dialogue. And this is, I, I want our listeners to know that I am reading this. I'm not just coming up with all of this. Okay, so we've got a prepared dialogue here that's covering lots of the topics that we've covered so far. But also, when it comes to in, uh, language learning, um, just bear in mind, the dialogues are a bit, um, what should we call them? Contrived? Yes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that this exact situation really would happen um, without the police being called or something like that. <laughs> I know, I always tell my students the first... 10 lessons, you just learn to be almost creepy at a party, yeah. asking people too much information. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're not at a party. We're in the streets in, in Sweden. For, do you know, the, the funny thing is, I, I am imagining this happening in uh, Maria Torjet. Okay. Because uh, just the idea of, of perhaps sitting in the park bench and being appro- approached by someone and so on, um, I can imagine, well, I know that you're going to be asking me for directions and I know that the Tunnelbanan is just along the road from uh, the park in Maria Good. That, Good that you. Okay? Yeah. Yes. I'm just imagining where this yeah. is happening. People are playing uh, pétanque. How do you say pétanque in, in Swedish? You know, the, the bulls game. Bull. Bull. Oh, that, right. that Swedish word, bull. Bull. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so people are playing bull. Yeah. Um, and it's the summer and, and we're enjoying ourselves in, in Maria Torjet. Yes, so the listeners have to imagine that and that people are very friendly and want to share the personal information with Absolutely. strangers. Absolutely, okay. So yeah, and we would also just perhaps uh, reinforce the fact that we are not suggesting that you go up to strangers and ask them for their phone number <laughs> in, the, in the street. Okay, let's do our conversation here. Ursäkta, pratar du svenska? Ja, jag pratar lite svenska. Kan du hjälpa mig? Var ligger tunnelbanan? Uh, den ligger rakt fram på höger sida. Tack så mycket. Vad heter du? Jag heter Mark. Vad heter du? Hej Mark. Jag heter Hanna. Hur mår du? Uh, jag mår bra, tack. Och du? Lite trött, men jag mår bra. Kommer du från Sverige? Ja, jag kommer från Sverige. Men jag bor i Storbritannien med min pojkvän. Var kommer du ifrån? Du pratar jättebra svenska. Tack så mycket. Jag är skotsk, men jag lär mig svenska. Vilka språk talar du? Jag pratar svenska, engelska och lite tyska. Min mamma är tysk. Hur många språk talar du? Jag talar nio språk. Engelska, svenska... Spanska, franska, italienska, portugisiska, kinesiska, svenska och norska. Vad duktig du är! Jag tycker om språk. Pratar din pojkvän svenska? Ja, han pratar pyttelite svenska. Han förstår om jag pratar långsamt. Pratar din familj svenska? Min fru och mina barn pratar inte svenska. Hur många barn har du? Två. De heter Alex och Andrew. Har du barn? Jag har ett barn. Han heter Gustav. Jag måste gå till tunnelbanan nu. 
Men vad har du för telefonnummer? Det skulle vara trevligt att träffas på en fika. Du kan öva på din svenska. Ja, det skulle vara trevligt. Mitt mobilnummer är 070 458 89 137. Tack, jag ringer dig. Det var trevligt att träffas. Tack detsamma. Ha en trevlig helg. Okej. Okay. Right. First of all, this is really ridiculous. <laughs> I can't imagine, you know, sitting in Maria Torje and, and then being approached by a stranger and then suddenly announcing, yes, I speak nine languages. <laughs> Maybe that's why I asked for your phone number. That's what kind of... <laughs> Also the idea that a Swedish person would <laughs> would uh, start to speak to a stranger like this. Yeah. The the important thing is here that in the, the, the language that we've covered, there's lots and lots of detail that we can now go into. Um so for example, if you are making friends, then you can use these phrases uh with them and, and talk about yourself and, and, and find out about them and, and get the conversation going because it's always about getting that conversation going, finding something that you've got in common and, and, and then making friends and, and who knows what could happen. <laughs> okay. What I would suggest we do is uh, pause for now. We're going to have a break. And then after the break, we'll listen to the conversation again and then talk about it. As you've probably heard, there are some phrases in here that are new. So we are going to go through those and then we'll talk about them after the break. But just before we do, two minutes of Swedish, of constant Swedish in a conversation like that. And I would imagine that our listeners are understanding lots of that. So it just shows you how much we've achieved in 10 lessons. Yeah, they are jätteduktiga. Ah, right, so the plural form of duktig. Exactly. Duktiga. Yes, we're talking about our listeners. Listeners, yeah. yeah. So, de är jätteduktiga. Yes, not only duktiga, jätteduktiga. Jätteduktiga. Okay, jättebra. We will be back in just a moment. All the Coffee Break Swedish podcast episodes are free, but did you know there's a full online course available? We offer video versions of the lessons where you see the words and phrases on the screen of your device. There are lesson notes providing further information and additional vocabulary and a bonus audio episode for every lesson. To find out more about our online course, go to coffeebreakswedish.com. Välkomna tillbaka. Welcome back. We are practicing what we've been covering in the past 10 lessons. Well, the past nine lessons. This is the 10th lesson. And we have just had a conversation. We're going to listen to this conversation one more time. And then hopefully you'll understand a little more the second time through. And then we'll go through each line of the conversation so that we understand absolutely everything. And Hanna can share the new language with us. Yes, that's good. Låter det bra? Det låter bra. Let's go then. Ursäkta, pratar du svenska? Ja, jag pratar lite svenska. Kan du hjälpa mig? Var ligger tunnelbanan? Den ligger rakt fram på höger sida. Tack så mycket. Vad heter du? Jag heter Mark. Vad heter du? Hej Mark, jag heter Hanna. Hur mår du? Jag mår bra, tack. Och du? Lite trött, men jag mår bra. Kommer du från Sverige? Ja, jag kommer ifrån Sverige, men jag bor i Storbritannien med min pojkvän. Var kommer du ifrån? Du pratar jättebra svenska. Tack så mycket. Jag är skotsk, men jag lär mig svenska. Vilka språk talar du? Jag pratar svenska, engelska och lite tyska. Min mamma är tysk. Hur många språk talar du? Jag talar nio språk. Uh, engelska, svenska, spanska, franska, italienska, portugisiska, uh, kinesiska, svenska och norska. Vad duktig du är! <laughs> Jag tycker om språk. Uh, pratar din pojkvän svenska? Ja, han pratar pyttelite svenska. Han förstår om jag pratar långsamt. Pratar din familj svenska? Min fru och mina barn pratar inte svenska. Hur många barn har du? Två. De heter Alex och Andrew. Har du barn? Jag har ett barn. Han heter Gustav. Jag måste gå till tunnelbanan nu. 
Men vad har du för telefonnummer? Det skulle vara trevligt att träffas på en fika. Du kan öva på din svenska. Ja, det skulle vara trevligt. Mitt mobilnummer är 070 458 89 137. Tack! Jag ringer dig. Det var trevligt att träffas. Tack detsamma. Ha en trevlig helg. Okay, as we've commented once or twice, this is perhaps not the most natural conversation, but it's using lots of the language that we've covered. So, Hanna, can we go through each line? And rather than me read all these lines, I want you to read both parts, so both uh, yourself and me. Okay? Yes, so if we start with what I, I um, opened the conversation with, mm-hmm. so I said, Ursäkta, pratar du svenska? Okay, so excuse me, do you speak Swedish? The kind of thing, I, I suppose, someone coming up to someone in, in a place like Maria Torjet, um, we could just assume that they're a tourist or something like that. Yes. Very touristy area. So, uh, do you speak Swedish? And then I answered... Ja, jag pratar lite svenska. Yes, I speak a little Swedish. And then you went on... Kan du hjälpa mig? Var ligger tunnelbanan? So this is the phrase that we covered in, in lesson eight when we were talking about where is the metro, tunnelbanen. We've got the N on the end there, tunnelbanen. Can you help me? Where is the metro or the subway? And you um, tell me where it is. Den ligger rakt fram på höger sida. So let's look at this. Den, we're referring to the tunnel, the, the tunnelbanan. So we don't say han or hun, but den, because it's en tunnelbana. Yes. Tunnelbanan is an N-word. So, den ligger rakt fram, so straight on, på höger sida, on the right-hand side. And yes. if we're standing in Maria Torje, that is exactly where the, the tunnelbanan yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Tack så mycket. Vad heter du? So, thank you very much. And then Hanna goes straight in there and, and says, Vad heter du? What is your name? Jag heter Mark. Vad heter du? So, I'm called Mark. What are you called? Hey, Mark. Jag heter Hanna. Hur mår du? So, the conversation picks up here. So, hi, Mark. My name's Hanna. Uh, how are you? Hur mår du? Jag mår bra, tack. Och du? So this is all straightforward from the early episodes we've learned. Uh, I'm well, thank you. And you? Jag är lite trött, men jag mår bra. So, Hanna says, jag är lite trött. I am a little tired. Jag är lite Trött. So that lite is the same lite as in uh, jag pratar lite svenska. Ja, yeah. precis. Okay, so jag är lite trött. Um, could Hanna have said jag är puttetrött? Jag är pyttelite trött. Ah, pyttelite. So ja. we need to put the lite. So I'm just a tiny ja. bit tired. Ja. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> yes, exactly. That, I guess that's why it sounds a bit odd. But yes, you could say it. Okay, so jag är lite trött. I am a little tired. Men jag mår bra, but I am well. And I guess now Mark is surprised that a Swede speak this much to you. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> the next question is, kommer du från Sverige? Do you come from Sweden? <laughs> Hanna then says. Ja, jag kommer från Sverige, men jag bor i Storbritannien med min pojkvän. So we've got, uh, jag kommer ifrån Sverige. So she comes from Sweden, but jag bor i Storbritannien. I live in Great Britain med min pojkvän. With my boyfriend. Ja. Okej. Okay. Var kommer du ifrån? Du pratar jättebra svenska. So where do you come from? You speak really great Swedish. Du pratar jättebra svenska. Tack så mycket. Jag är skotsk, men jag lär mig svenska. So I say thank you so much. Thank you very much. Jag är skotsk. I'm Scottish. Men jag lär mig svenska. A phrase we've just learned. I am teaching myself Swedish. Ja. Literally, I'm learning myself Swedish. In, in, in Scottish, in Scots, sometimes we say I'm learning myself. Like, rather than teaching, I'm, oh, really? I'm learning myself. Yeah. Uh, we, we use learn when someone, as a, as a transitive verb, like, I'll, I'll learn you something. Yeah, ah. But it's, it's not really correct. No, okay. But when I see jag lär mig svenska, I'm, I'm learning myself Swedish. But anyway. Because if I would use, uh, if I don't have the me, me, mm-hmm. Uh, and I would say lär ut, then I'm teaching rather. Ah. So you are learning, mm-hmm. but I'm teaching if I say lär ut. So okay. it, it seemed to be working in the same way yeah. that you just described. Can we can we just use lär on its own? Can I say jag lär svenska? No. 
Okay. Because it doesn't, it's something missing there. There's something missing. So it's either, ja lär mig, mm. but the teacher lär ut. Yes, Svenska. because if you just say lär, it's like, are you learning or are you teaching okay. or what are you talking about? Okay, so how would you say I teach Swedish? You can say, ja lär ut svenska. Yeah. Or you can just have a different verb and say, jag undervisar i svenska. Right, okay. So, but we'll come back to that another yeah. time. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so then I go on and ask another question. Ja, vilka språk talar du? So this is not something uh, we've learned so far. We've learned hur många språk talar du? How many languages do you speak? But here you're saying vilka. Ja. Vilka means what? Uh, which in plural. Okay. So, vilka språk, which languages do you speak? Yes. And I don't want to make this too difficult, but if you said, which language do you speak? Mm -hmm. Then you would say, vilket. Because uh, it's ett språk. Yes. Vilket språk talar du? Um, so, would it be, if it were an N-word, would it be vilken? Perfekt. Bra, Mark. So, give us an example of that. Vilken park är det här? Ah, uh, which park? Is this one? Is it? Is, yes, is this... exactly. Okay, uh, det här är Maria Torget. Perfekt, <laughs> okay. bra. Right, so that's good. We've got three words for the price of one there. Yeah. Vilken, vilket and vilka. Yeah. So coming back to our question then, vilka språk talar du? Which languages do you speak? Jag pratar svenska, engelska och lite tyska. So I speak Swedish, English and a little German. Yeah. Min mamma är tysk. My mom is German. Hur många språk talar du? So that's the form of the question that we, we've, we're familiar with. How many languages do you speak? And then I come away with the, the ridiculous uh, thing that I would not say to someone in, <laughs> in the middle of the, the, the town. But I said... Uh, Nio språk. That's right. <laughs> so I, I named them... Engelska. English. Franska, French, Spanska, Spanish, Italienska, Italian, Tyska, German, Portugisiska, Portuguese, och lite Kinesiska, and a little Chinese, lite Norska, little Norwegian, och lite Svenska. And a little Swedish. As I say, it's not something I would say to anyone, but <laughs> Hannah, you wrote this conversation, so I'm just reading what you wrote. Okay, your response to that was... Which, which I would respond in real life. I would say, vad duktig du är. So that's that, um, how competent or something Yeah, how like good, how competent you are. Yeah. If you, um, you can, this is not going to come off well, you uh -huh. can say this to a dog. <laughs> or, or if, you know the expression, be like a good girl? Yeah. Okay, in yeah. Swedish, that is duktig flicka. Ah, right. Okay, so like, um, you're, you're seeing... Uh, oh, clever boy, that kind yes. of thing. Okay, so you can say that to a dog, a clever yes. boy. Um, Pierre Benoit, who is our, our French colleague and works with us on Coffee Break French, um, he always puts on this accent and goes, oh, you're so good! Like this. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, we'll need to teach him that. Okay, so then I responded and I used a phrase. Now, I, I didn't know this phrase before we were reading the, uh, the, the conversation, but it's something that we're definitely going to be covering in future lessons, talking yeah. about your likes and dislikes. So I said... Jag tycker om språk. So, tycker om... That's how you say you like something, yeah? Yes. So could I say, ja tycker om Stockholm? Precis. So I like Stockholm. Uh, ja tycker om språk. Ja tycker om uh, uh, fika. Ja. Can you follow it with a verb then? Um, yes. Ja tycker om tala svenska. But if you have a verb... So fika is, it can be both, both yeah. a, mm -hmm. a noun and a verb. So if you have it with a verb, then you have to have an at. Ah, so yeah. jag tycker om att fika is different from jag tycker om fika. Right, so jag tycker om fika is I like the fika coffee yeah, break. You like coffee, you like yeah. buns, you like... <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't? Um, but jag tycker om att fika, I like going for a coffee break with my friends and so on. Yes. Jättebra. Okay, so that phrase, will definitely come back to that in a future yeah. lesson. But at the moment, just take it as I like languages. Jag tycker om språk, that's my pastime, if you like. Yeah. Um, okay, and then I go on and ask another question. Pratar din pojkvän svenska? Does your boyfriend speak Swedish? And look at the construction there. Look at the order. Prater din pojkvän svenska speaks your boyfriend Swedish. So just the same way as we would say prater du svenska, do you speak Swedish? Here we're saying prater 
and then the subject din pojkvän. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, ja, han pratar pyttelite svenska. Yeah, he speaks a tiny bit of Swedish. Han förstår om jag pratar långsamt. Right, so we've got a new word in here. Yes. Um, well, it's a word that we've just heard with tycker om. Mm-hmm. But han förstår, he understands, om jag pratar långsamt. Om is one of those tiny words that can mean a lot of different things. In this instant, it means if. If, okay. So he understands if I speak slowly. Yes. Now we've had långsammare. Ja. But this is different. This is långsamt. Yes. So långsammare, slower. Yes. Or more slowly. And here långsamt. Slowly. Okay. Jättebra. Okay. So the conversation continues. Pratar din familj svenska? And is asking, does your family speak Swedish? So again, that same construction, prater, then the subject, din familj, svenska. Ja. Okej. Okay. Um, min fru och mina barn pratar inte svenska. Right. My wife and my children don't speak Swedish. Pratar inte svenska. They speak not Swedish. Hur många barn har du? Han asks, how many children do you have? And I respond? Två. De heter Alex och Andrew. So I say two. They are called Alex and Andrew. And uh, you go on to say, or I go on to say. Har du barn? Have you got any children? And I responds? Jag har ett barn. I've got one child. Han heter Gustav. He's called Gustav. Jag måste gå till tunnelbanan nu. Okay, so she's obviously got fed up and she wants to, to, to leave. I'm in a rush. <laughs> okay, so jag måste gå. I, I'm guessing it means I must go. Yes. So it's very like the English, obviously, but jag måste gå till tunnelbanan, to the underground. Ja. Okay. Um, men vad har du för telefonnummer? But what's your phone number? Det skulle vara trevligt att träffas på en fika. Right, so this start of the sentence is new. We've not covered this before. No, and um, it, it means it would be. It would be. So the vara, um, we've, we've, we've come across that to be. Yes. Det skulle vara trevligt. It would be nice. Yes. So what are we going to do? Att träffas på en fika. So we've heard träffas, to meet. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when you meet someone for the first time. Uh, trevligt att träffas, nice to meet you. Um, but you can also then meet, use träffas as in to meet up with someone. Yes. And in this case you're saying it would be nice to meet up for a fika, for a coffee. Ja. Uh, du kan öva på din svenska. And you can practice your Swedish. Du kan yes. öva på din svenska. This is. Okay, so I agree. You, you don't have a choice, it sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> so what do I say? Uh, ja, det skulle vara trevligt. Yeah, it would be nice. Mitt mobilnummer är... My mobile number is... 070 458 89137. Uh, so 070 And just a reminder that that's not my mobile number. Please don't call it. <laughs> <laughs> Tack, jag ringer dig. Det var trevligt att träffas. So, this is new again. Jag ringer dig. Um, I'm guessing it means I'll call you. Yes. So, ringer from the verb. To call is att ringa. Att ringa. So, ends in er. Ja. Jag, uh, jag ringer dig. Precis. I will call you. Um, and then she finishes by saying... Det var trevligt att träffas. It was nice to meet you. So, det var... Again, that's not something we've had before... But I think we've come across it perhaps once yeah, or twice. Yeah, so it's, it's past tense. Mm-hmm. Um, it was nice to meet you. Det var trevligt att träffas. Okay, so in the present it would be det är. Mm-hmm. In the past det var. Yeah, I'm off to the to the metro. Yeah, absolutely. And then I say uh, Ta- thanks the same. <laughs> Tack detsamma. <laughs> Tack detsamma. And then I wish you a pleasant weekend. Ja, ha en trevlig helg. Fantastic. So this has been a really long episode, but I think you'll agree that we've covered laws and the fact that you're now able to listen to this full conversation definitely says something about how much progress we've made in the past 10 episodes of Coffee Break Swedish. Yeah, well done. (laughs) 
So that is it for this episode of Coffee Break Swedish and indeed for this first part of the series. We'll be taking a couple of weeks break now, um, but we'll be back after uh, the, the, the break and we'll be starting a new block, a new unit, if you like, and we'll be continuing to look at various topics that you'll come across when you're travelling in a Swedish-speaking area. Don't forget, of course, that you can check out all our bonus materials, the video versions, the lesson notes, and the bonus audio materials at coffeebreakswedish.com. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search for Coffee Break Swedish. And since it's the end of the first unit, we post your question asking you for your feedback. Absolutely. We're really keen to find out what you think of uh, the course of Coffee Break Swedish and also about Swedish. Are you finding it easy? Are you finding it difficult? What are the things that are, are causing you some difficulty? We'd love to hear all of this. So we'll be back soon. Until then. Hej då! You have been listening to a production of the Coffee Break Academy for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2020, Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2020, Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>